These days, tech means coding and apps and putting your bored SIDs on the blockchain. But back when Britain still made stuff, proper tech was men with big sideboards hammering together a big sideboard. As everyone knew from watching the BBC's The Great Egg Race. Egg Race is most remembered for the presence of scientist Heinz Wolf. Ask a child to describe a nutty professor, and he's exactly what you'd end up with. Hair bald on top, wild at the sides, bow tie, German accent. The name Heinz Wolf. Absolute Roald Dahl ass professor. Three trembling teams are waiting to have today's problem revealed to them. Judge for the first four series, Wolf was promoted to main host for the rest of the run and remained a cult figure in later years, even fronting a video game. The show's strange title came from its initial remit of egg-based challenges, such as transporting or flinging one without smashing it, before expanding into a more general theme. In the genre of build something in the time limit, like Scrap Heap Challenge or Making It, Egg Race is basically a school science fair, but for adult nerds. When the word meant something, and not just a bloke in a Baby Yoda shirt from Tesco, these are real boffins, proper Poindexters, certified spods, not seen a single breast between them, but with engineering degrees up the Aris. And it's yet another banger of a theme with big craftwork vibes over a title sequence by Aardman Animations. Teams hail from a wide variety of worlds, manufacturers, brewers, computer clubs, anywhere men gather to talk about engines and... I don't know, sumps? Like much telly of this era, it's brilliant for giving us a look at the great British public, and Heinz has a typically unique way of asking people who they are. Before you really get started, tell me who you are and what you do when you're in your right mind. Hello, my name's Adam Thomas. This is Steve Taylor. Hello. Nandy Beecroft. Hello. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm John Jarvis. I'm the production engineer for both of our factories in Nottingham. My colleagues are Peter Williams and Richard Berry. Good evening. My name is Alan Robbins, and with me is Bob Baxter and Molly Ancliffe. Kevin Kennedy, who is a truck fitter. Dave Lord, John Hurrell, and myself, Steve Walker. Will Barclay. Ian MacDonald. Ian Warns. And Ian Walker. Keith Jenkins. I work in the microwave. We have Dr. Michael Hammer and Keith Postlethwaite. Mike yeah, Grossmith. Ricky Gammy. Not a single woman to be seen. And every name here is ridiculous. This is uh, Brian Millard. Let's move on. That was, of course, putting on the Ritz. This week's teams of 1980s men are tasked with building robot hands able to play a recognisable piece of music on a piano. All right, go and start tickling your eyebrows. <laughs> Along with tools. They've been given random household items to use in their builds, from buckets and rubber gloves to indigestion tablets. I'll let Heinz explain. We provide them with three absolutely identical kits, and these are the sort of things which we give them. They are rolling pins and food whisks, tins, hose pipes and corkscrews. A lot of telly, you think, pfft, I could do that. Easy, but the challenges here make me feel like a caveman trying to carve a smartphone out of a bone. But what's the ultimate source of energy for this? The ultimate source of energy is a, a, bucket, a bucket of water on a piece of string. <laughs> Fear not. These are men with set squares and protractors who know how to use them. If you got stuck with this lot on a desert island, they'd have knocked up a three-storey treehouse with flushing bog in the first 12 hours. <laughs> That's it. Unlike modern shows, it feels very real and uncontrived. During the chats, you can hear industrious sounds in the background of the other teams beavering away. And the large boy 
will turn a very small pulley, mm -hmm. hopefully quickly, with a fan blade yeah. on it. So by altering the pitch of the fan... We oh look, it's one of those self-playing pianos from the Old West. And let's start it. Our robot concerto demonstrates the huge variety in designs. One's been computer programmed with a wooden peg punch card system. Another's powered by a bucket of water. And right. off she goes. <laughs> This one's got a lovely shade of nail varnish. The green machine has been installed. Its fingers are resting on the keys. There's extra points if it's a recognisable tune. Now, madam, did you recognise what this was? I did, but I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. Any, any, any... Choose any... your joy of man's desiring. Oh, no. <laughs> what was it? Haken Serenade. Johnny Haken Serenade. <laughs> Countdown Racing. No? No. <laughs> Sadly, nobody went for a mechanical Turk hiding under the piano stool. And when the winners heave their monstrosity back for an encore, it's like something from Look Around You. Piano bot! Musical challenges were popular. In a 1979 episode, they're designing a device to play a tune on a recorder. think Vic and Bob might have got a few ideas with this instrument. Your 30 seconds are starting now. now. A national anthem powered by a man having a whittle. Everyone on your feet. On the subject of things I can't show, for a one-off, there was a post-watershed, Great Egg Race After Dark. Now what you want you to construct is in a sense a synthetic Peter. And Dick Macon. But, but I have an organ. It will have to be attached realistically to one member of the team. It shall be able to express joy, dejection and excitement. But rather cunningly at the end of theirs, uh, they have a, f a very flexible section. It's in fact a piece of rubber tubing which has been stiffened internally in some way. Uh, now it looks to me as if it's potentially rather floppy because there yes. isn't, obviously isn't very much stiffness in it. Right, have we decided on the length of that then? Is it better optimistic? There isn't, there isn't a load involved, is there? What about the undercarriage? Because if we have to ram him, we can pull it back and then ram him. Yeah. Um, its tip is moving and exploring my face. It, it looks very attractive indeed. No, and of course, I'm, I'm feeling it's a little longer than the other one we looked at. Oh, it's it's much thinner. Thinner. But an interesting performance, perhaps a trifle rigid. But it really was rather pretty, uh, I thought. Uh, very attractive. So, 15 for its general appearance. And I must confess, I myself would really rather lust after one of these. There's nothing quite like the TV aesthetics of the era. And here they need to build a submarine able to sink and resurface in a big fish tank. We're going to have to sink it almost immediately. That's right, yeah. 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 Hello, Andrew. Sorry to disturb you. How's it going? Fine, thank you. Splendid. Well, good luck. Thank you. Uh, time is rushing past, I'm sure. Thank you. Guess Judge has been down the pub with your dad and his mates. <laughs> they, can, they can make some beautiful gases, yes. No big drama finale. No sporting event can match the incredible tension of whether or not this submarine, buoyancy powered by an Alka-Seltzer tablet, will resurface. Viewers must have been losing their minds. I think it's... It's, it's coming up, it's coming up at the back. And it may come up backwards. <laughs> right, it's the, running the full course. Here she comes. Now, I wonder if she's going to make it right up to the surface. This is television. Come on! 
You can do it, girl. You can do it. Welcome to the circus, very nice. <laughs> Yes. Yes. That's how it's done. That's how it's fucking done. Another sub resembles something your kid hands you when they come running out of play school. Yes. Are your chambers <laughs> flooded? Four. You don't know the half of it, mate. No pushing, sure gentlemen, no pushing. Push. <laughs> right? Well, are you ready? Yes. Well, go. This is the stone age of manually cranked drills and elbow grease, hand-drawn equations, and sometimes just MacGyvering it by tying together two biscuit tins. I thought you'd like it. Men soaring, men doing sums, men thinking, just men working. Oh, don't worry. Big George Francis would have been amazing at this show. One episode tasks them with building a car light enough to be carried out of bits of another car in what the A-team did when they were locked in a barn with the baddies waiting outside. Even in such a high-pressure environment, there's still time to have a laugh. Or was it a chick 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 Oh, hang on. Can you get back in? He's a one, ain't he, this fella? A real character. A couple of decades later, behaviour like that would have got him his own BBC Two spin-off. Mad Lens Barmy Builds. When you signed up to the Great Egg Race, but a number three on Interpol's most wanted list. And the headlines tonight? Man falls while lifting car over wall. Oh. <laughs> Wish they'd kept the camera on the judge jauntily running alongside. <laughs> Just for funsies, they end with a proper race, where once again our friends having a bleeding laugh. <laughs> but it's not all horseplay as the spirit of competition engenders an intense, high-pressure environment. What method of what heating are you going to use? Well, this is, we've got a Bunsen burner. Yeah, but this is all going to catch fire. It's no, it doesn't. Disaster. It doesn't. No, other way round. Other way round. Other way round. No, 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 whoa. No. What way? Like that. That was the so way that, I was... No, you didn't. You had that. That's got to point down. OK. okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, the um, tail's come off, John. Oh, Christ, yes. This blue's not going off, is it? Move, Bob, move off a bit, please. Where have you got to? OK. Starting on your hand. We're doing the hand. Yeah. What about the shoe? What shoe? In this episode, they have to construct a flying machine. But first, let me introduce my guest judge, Ken Wallace. Ken uh, will be known to many of you as the world's principal proponent of autogyres. That's where I knew him from. Well, get levitating. Right, thank you. I hope you understand the strength it took me not to cut to that 9-11 clip again with this shit. <laughs> that was only about a second and a half. Shame there's no extra points for a Simpsons tribute. With absolutely top-notch facial hair on display, teams are given three and a half hours to build a working prehensile tail. Though Britain's strictest headmistress is going to be furious when she hears about men identifying as monkeys. Next slide. <laughs> 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 
harder, more excited, more joyous. The sound. Title sequence for the final series had Heinz getting wigged up by a Pee Wee Herman breakfast machine. Welcome to a windswept edition of the program from Brancaster Sands at the top of Norfolk. What's guest judge Jeremy Corbyn going to get them to build? A public library for every person in Britain? But even proper science shows aren't safe from getting gotchered, and Howard of Tomorrow's World pops up to tell Heinz he's not hosting this week, he's playing. So, of course, in the good or bad old days, the judges actually used to make things, and I still vividly remember making a self-propelled salami. Uh, so, the, the guest <laughs> judge today My is, in dear. fact, <laughs> going to be <laughs> Professor <laughs> Meredith Thring, and he's going to be guiding me. Meredith? Classic man's name? The challenge is to construct a mechanical man to knock each other's off of a greasy pole. That old chestnut some wacky walks from the theatrical prop makers on the blue team and the very first woman we've seen. So let's cut down on the effin' and jeffin', eh chaps? On that windy beach, Meredith's hair takes the crown in what's been a spectacularly haired series, like Wolverine's Grandad. In front of a classic British seaside audience, a knockout tournament atop the greasy pole, but whatever real steel robot battle you've been imagining in your mind, it doesn't quite live up to it. Off you go! Uh, and Red seems to be doing quite well, getting into the middle very quickly and is battling away. He's still battling oh, Red, hanging off of him. Death and that seems to be it. Yes, through the winner! OK, but surely Heinz has cooked up a mechanical marvel that could take down Godzilla. Go on, go on, John. Please, go on, John. Yellow now at 90 degrees and looking too yellow. It doesn't want to die. OK, I think we're going to have to claim stalemate there. Hi, how you doing? We're back and we're ready for it all over again. They're now within striking distance of each other. It's trying to knock one of the balloons, but I don't think that's going to get them too far. Look, is it... Oh, it's there! What about that? <laughs> and the final thing <laughs> on Robot Wars. Bye bye. The prop makers celebrate wackily, but Egg Race is a real variety pack, from kaiju battles to an automatic card dealer. In a series filled with bearded nerds, look at this neckerchiefed hunk, like Fred from Scooby Doo, played by David Essex. The only thing he needs to build is a fanny drying machine. Well, gentlemen, are you ready to pull your ropes? I don't need asking twice. Card bots range from so quiet you can hear one contestant's whistling nose. <laughs> to this shrieking monstrosity. Oh dear. Well, what's going wrong? <laughs> well, it's, not, it's not how we planned it. No. In a bit of a departure, another challenge is to make special effects for a theatrical play, which includes the finest looking bunch yet. And uh, this is Mike Hole and Nigel Robb. Have you got any previous experience in engineering? <laughs> And how do I know? I'll tell you how I know! So tell me how you know how you really, really know. When you think they'll run out of things to build, Heinz hits them with his wildest demand yet, an electronic husky. Said husky will drag teams round a course on a sled. And is that a drawing of Eric Morecambe? Decades on, robot dogs patrol our streets, waiting for the right moment to turn on their masters and hunt us all down. What's Heinz thinking? Getting his teams to create such potential killing machines. Irresponsible isn't the word for it. Right, all your attention. Three, two, one. <laughs> You're laughing now, but this is where it all starts. The Skynet moment. 
Approaching the finishing post. I'm <laughs> <laughs> coming up more willing now. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a shame the one where they had to make an XL bully keeps getting pulled from YouTube. That poor baby. We shan't see the like of Great Egg Race again. Not so much its brilliant portrait of bygone British innovation, but rather the truly spectacular collection of great British faces and names and beards. Stop getting nostalgic about old chocolate bars and hanging and start bringing back looks like this. And did those feet in ancient times walk up on England's mountains green? And was the holy lamb of God?